Hello YouTube, welcome back to part 3 of how to build a Windows Server 2012 R2 the proper way. Today we're going to show you guys how to prep a server before getting it ready for an install. There's certain things to go through, a certain proper way to go through a checklist and do everything proper. There's only really one way to get the, the server set up to configure um, in terms of what you need to do before you get it set up. Let's take a look. Alright, we're going to take a look at how to set up your server and get it configured and get it ready to actually install roles. This is very important that you do this right. Um, so we're going to take a look at the different things that we need to do. There's actually a checklist that when we go in here that we're going to follow. Um, so let's uh, bring over the window that we want to look at. Now you're not going to see this small on full screen window for long, just until we set up a static IP. So we're connected to that. I'm going to full screen this. Pull this over. Boom. Again, this is not about Hyper-V. Uh, we're going to put in our password. So here's our R2 server. You guys got to check out my Facebook, and uh, please subscribe if you guys uh, haven't already. And uh, if you like this video, let me know. Uh, last time I got a lot of uh, a lot of views on my last video. So it seems like you guys are liking the series, which is good. Uh, I want to see what you guys uh, what you guys think about every single video. If there's ways that I can improve it, let me know. Um, but, uh, so yeah. Here we have the server. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into this local server tab. This is the server manager. If you've never used the server, uh, they've had server manager in pretty much every version back to 2003. I don't know what was in 2000, but I, 2003 I knew and 2008 I knew. Um, so yeah, we have to deal with this ugly view for now. But um, the first thing we're going to want to do is name this computer. And it's going to want to reboot when we do this. So the server manager here, um, I probably am jumping ahead. The server manager here, when we go to dashboard, this gives you an idea of everything that's going on in your server. It gives you a little bit of a health status down here. And these will turn red if there's a problem. And I'll explain that more as I go. So I just want to explain the first thing that you want to do to set up your server before I explain anything else. And that's to go to this local server tab. In previous versions it was more of an actual checklist. But to me this is still my checklist. So the first thing I do when I set up a server is I come into here. Um, yeah, 2003 had an actual kind of list. And we're going to give it a name. So for the pro the purpose of this, you're always going to name. Now this is all about being proper. Anybody can make that server work, but there's a proper way to do things for an organization and for kindness to the next admin. If you lose that account, if you have to give that account to somebody else, whatever. So you just it's just politeness that you do things proper. So you name the same name for the, the VHD file and the same name for the domain controller and the same name for the name on the Hyper-V should all be the same. So that's DC1. Now we're naming it DC1 because it's going to be Domain Controller 1. If you don't know what a Domain Controller is, I'll explain that later. So we're going to name it. That's the first thing you do. It's going to want to reboot, but we're not going to let it right away. We're going to wait till later because it's going to want to reboot for lots of different things. You don't have to reboot right away. So the first thing you want to do is rename the computer because it will give it a generic name you don't want. So we're going to name it DC1. See, you must restart. You're going to say OK. Now it's got this little warning here about restarting. We're going to say close. Restart later. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go firewalls on. That's fine. Remote management is enabled. Remote desktop. That's one of the things that we want to do first. And that's why we kind of have to deal with this crappy non-full screen view. Um, and we're going to uncheck this just in case. Um, especially if you're using a Linux system to connect, which we're not. But if you are, it's important to uncheck that. Uh, in some cases, you also have to add users here. That should be enough. And what we're going to do is go OK. And we're not going to do any Nick teaming at this point. Um, not in the virtual machine because the actual host is Nick Team Garden. So that would be something that you'd consider before you would do anything, right? Um, then you'd go into Ethernet and decide what's the static IP of this machine. And because this is just a, a lab, it doesn't really matter. But if you're actually to set up a server, you're going to properly write out exactly all your IP addresses. And you never, ever want to put servers in the same range for your DHCP range. Never. And the reason you don't do that is because, you, you know, you can make reservations for your servers, but that's, that's wrong. That's not as good as, 
you know, and, it, and it's extra work. You got to maintain all this crap. Instead of doing that, just have a set outside of your scope that you assign your servers. So lots of people use like, you know, 5.10 or 1.10 or 1.11 for their first two servers. Um, but for the purpose of this, we're going to pretty much do whatever because it's just to kind of show you. I'll probably still follow that because it's just the way I roll. But that's very important, guys. Just make sure you do not, because you'll get IP conflicts. If you don't know what that is, it's when two computers have the same IP address and they can't talk properly and they both won't have internet access. And they'll have it, internet access for like a minute and then drop and then the other one will get the access. It's it's not good. So what we're going to do here is we're going to see what we're getting. Dished out already. 5.155. So what we want to do is we're probably going to set this as my other service range. So we're going to set this as 5.25. And when you're connected to Hyper-V like this, you won't lose connection if you make a mistake. But keep in mind, if you are remoted into your computer and you change an adapter setting, even if you do it right, sometimes you'll lose a connection. Um, and you may lose connection. So if it's mission critical, you may not want to do that in the middle of the server being used. So we're going to go ahead in here and set a static IP. That's the first thing you want to do with an IP with a server, obviously, because you do not want the IP to change, right? That's that's bad. So that's the first thing you want to do. Well, not the first thing, obviously, but pretty pretty well. Um, and we're going to go five dot. We're going to give it way out of my scope. It should be. Uh, yeah. If I look at my actual scope, scope. Alrighty. So that works out. Uh, we're then going to go like this. It's funny. So it's going to point to itself, and that's going to point to the router. For now. That will change when we set up multiple domain controllers for Active Directory replication, which is really cool. Active Directory replication lets us actually replicate the data between two domain controllers. Yeah. We're connected to the internet. That's important. So now what that means is our IP is not going to change. It's not. No matter what, unless we go in and change it, our IP is not going to change. We might have IP conflicts if some idiot goes up and set it to DHCP scope and uh, puts it in the same, his servers in the same range like an idiot. Like I've seen lots of printer companies do, I won't name names. But, uh, so we've got data center here, we're going to go in. So we've pretty much done everything on this side. We're going to have to do the work group later because we want to reboot later. And we need to name the computer after we connect it to a domain. And this one we're not going to connect to a domain because it's going to be a domain. Um, last updates, install updates. Now, before you install any roles, what you're going to want to do is install updates. So we're going to get that going. Error reporting can turn off. Customer experience program, no thank you. On time zone. Well, we are in Canada, so that's correct. But we're not in the eastern, we're in the Pacific. We're on the complete west coast where we have nice weather. It's and my friend in Southern California, Eric, gets more, <laughs> gets more uh, crappy weather. So we're going to pick Pacific Time in the U.S. Uh, U.S. and Canada. And that still says Eastern Canada because we need to refresh. And then that's obviously going to change to Pacific. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at everything, make sure. You'd also want to activate your server. It's probably a good idea to activate it right away, but you do have 180 days to activate your server. So you don't have to do it right away, but it's probably a good idea to do it before you get into the shop. Uh, 2012 is not so bad, but certain server versions, like if you have a trial version like this one is, and you try to install a real key, you'll have problems. Now there is command, um, there is, if that happens to you, there is commands to, to fix that. But if it's a domain controller, you'll have to take your domain down. And that can be a nightmare when you're in the middle of installing a server. So it's a good idea to install it ahead of time. So we're done here in terms of setting it up and getting it all ready. Now that we've set a static IP, though, let me show you guys what we can actually do now. I've got Windows 10 going on here. 
So we're gonna go up and go run. <clears throat> My run box over here, and we're gonna go um, Microsoft Terminal Services Connection. That's gonna come up, and then we're gonna type in the server. Let's see here, so that one's going to be 192.168.5.20. We're going to go options. Uh, so, yeah, actually, I have to reboot. I just thought of something because we haven't renamed it yet. So, let's reboot this guy. So, what we're going to do to reboot it is go like this. And we reboot it, the name of the server is going to be changed from that funny name that it gave itself to a more meaningful name like DC1 for Domain Controller 1. I'm going to pause the video and come back in a bit. Alright, welcome back. So now we're going to take a look again. And this time, like I said, we don't have to deal with this tiny little window. Let's uh, go ahead and remote in. This time we want to make sure we put in the name of the actual server which is DC1 slash the username and then your password when it asks you. You can also save it as a file. By the way, you can save these as RDP files. And uh, what you can actually do is if you save them as RDP files is you can actually go and save them on your desktop and then just double click on the desktop icon if you save it with a password and everything and it has your exact settings. But uh, that's for another video. So right now you want to put in the name of the computer until it's a, until it's a domain controller anyway. Until you have a domain controller and it's, and it's a computer on the domain, then you can just use the domain slash um, the domain slash username, and it'll work. But again, I'll show you guys that later. So right now we've got the IP in there. We're going to connect. It's going to give us a security warning after we put in our password here, and the security warning is just telling us, hey, just so you know, there's no security certificate. But almost nobody buys a security certificate for internal use. So here you can see the red. Oh no! Don't worry about it. So this is going to fix itself. It just needs to refresh. I'll actually show you guys that here. See? All's good. So we're going to go into our local server. As you can see, the new computer name is now DC1. And we're pretty much ready to go. It's activated. Um, and as you can see, we have the full screen. We don't have to deal with that really, you know, dismal view. So next what we want to do is take a look at this interface here. So just to give you an idea, this is where we install our rules from and where we remove them from. And we don't actually have to be on the same server to do it. We just have to be, um, we just have to have server manager installed. We can also do this on our Windows 8 or 8.1 or Windows 10 desktops with the technical preview installed, or not the technical preview, pardon me, with the um, what's called RSAT, Remote Server Administration Toolkit, and that's the way that we can actually go and get all these kind of tools on Windows 7 or Windows 8 boxes, or Windows to, uh, other, other Windows servers as well, uh, maybe that just don't have Active Directory installed, you can still install these tools and get away with it. You can also use MMC Snap-ins, but again, the, that's for another video. Uh, but you can do anything from here, uh, you can also do it with PowerShell, of course. Um, so that's that. Uh, some things you might want to consider when you're getting your server ready right about now is you probably want to start installing things like, let's say if you have an, an HP server, you're going to want to install your ILO or integrated lights out. This is something that uh, works with a built-in NIC, especially for the integrated lights out controller on Lenovo servers. They, they use something called IMM or integrated management module. It's now called Think Management Module. Both of these work fine. And we're, or sorry, not fine, work really well. And you're going to want to configure these right away. If you're using a RAID controller, which you should be, you want to make sure that you install any kind of RAID software that might have. You want to make sure that you have all your updates done. And even after you get them all done and it says it's fine, you're going to want to go back in and update some more. So here we are back. As you can see, that there's some updates that still need to get done. You want to make sure you install only the updates that you need. There may be some updates that you don't. Obviously, most of the ones that are going to be underneath the... Um, Underneath critical updates, or important updates rather. <clears throat> so 
So anything under important updates, obviously it's going to be important to install. But as you can see under optional updates, there are going to be important updates, in my opinion, under optional updates, like these ones. But you're going to see rules like this that are going to be optional. Or they might say update for Silverlight or something like that. Similar to what you might see on a Windows installation that's fresh. But you're going to want to make sure you update all these. Um, before you do any other rules. So before we do any other rules, we're going to make sure this is completely updated. This pretty much completes this video. Um, I'm going to wrap it up now because in the next video we're going to show you how to install Active Directory, DNS, and get everything configured. This is a video just to show you the preparation for the server before you do anything. As you can see, this is a lot of work. If you guys like this video, please like it. If you guys dislike it, please go ahead and dislike it. Uh, please also um, make sure you guys subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and make sure if you haven't seen the rest of the videos to go ahead and check them out. Um, of course, we're also going to be doing tech news and um, at the end of the week, so make sure you turn into that as well. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good day.